Dr. H. Narsimaya, HN to friends and maestro, meaning teacher to several generations of adoring students, is synonymous with National High School and College, one of the first educational institutions in Bangalore. Achen was born in 1920 to a poor backward family in a small town close to Bangalore. After completing his primary and middle school education, he joined the National High School in 1938, a place he has never left to date. He is perhaps more revered for the active role he played in the freedom struggle and his attempts at inculcating the same sense of patriotism in his students. 1942, I was studying in the third year B.S.C. on a physics in the Central College, Bangalore. As I told you, I have been um, from the beginning inspired by Gandhiji and Jawaharlal Nehru. I thought, you see, there was a dilemma, you see, in my mind. This dilemma is not the same thing. I freedom struggle to go to the studies discontinued. I will say, personally, studies continued to go to the study. Because it is the duty of every citizen of Every the Indian is to fight for independence, to fight for liberation. Then I decided that is the most important uh, significant moment is in my life. Decided to plunge into the uh, movement. Then I was arrested, etc. I was in three jails, Bangalore jail, Mysore jail. And I am proud to see that I was in Yarwada jail, Pune, where that Yarwada jail, Pune was considered to be second home of Mahatma Gandhi. I am exceedingly happy with the, so I have got so much satisfaction that I did my duty here during the 1942 quit India struggle. A man of simple living and high thinking, his rationalist approach has not distanced him from his belief in culture. Culture and the Samskriti and the Kanda, the Bala, Mulibadu, Chataman, and the Nava, for this second, the Adna, and then Kukura, Pogna, the Kinaja, or Kaukasa, and the Kosta could come in and waste chance like that. But we bargain them all about the dance, drama, music, and the Kagi. Achen is considered to be a great educationist. He strongly believes in rural education and has started several educational institutions across Karnataka. Education ultimately stands for values. Values are education. Anki amshiglu maithi information, information beko. But ultimately, yen beko thele the values beko. It is better to be a man of value than a man of success, which means success should not be at the cost of values. Values, 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 education Dr. H.N. is a living example of the concept of self-help. A stickler for routine, he has been a familiar sight at Lalbagh for nearly half a century. A bachelor by choice, Dr. H. N. has replaced a home with his college hostel for more than 40 years. Despite missing a family life, he never fails to laugh at himself. No, no, In the true spirit of education, this Padma Shri recipient has strived to inculcate a sense of selflessness in his students, deeply inspired by the teachings of Swami Vivekanand and Gautama Buddha. Delhi sadhyo, yaavya vidyal sadhyo, aa vidyali na uinno ko saaye madhu konda. Naan wo vichan sraagi the, mupa lagi the. Aba gna the, the the ladhe manoba vechko madhu kala. Inno ko seva madhu konda madhu. Kone le one day the Swami Vivekanand hele dalle, they alone live who live for others. The rest are more dead than alive on earth. HN founded the Bangalore Science Forum 35 years ago to popularize science and promote scientific temper. Wearing Khadi, even though I'm a student of science and I got my PhD in nuclear science. <coughs> I believe in science and technology in early. But wearing khadi has got some economic significance early. So this wearing khadi is a symbol of nationalism early. Yeah. It's a symbol of nationalism. Therefore, I am proud of wearing khadi. I feel so sad see, for those people you see, who don't live up to the values of wearing khadi. HN is known to have inspired many an artist, especially in Kannada theatre. 
ಎಕ್ಸಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಅಂದಾಗ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾಸಸ್ ಉಳಿದ ವಿಷಯಗಳಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ನಾನು ಹೇಳ್ತಾಯಿರೋದು ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಕಲೆ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿ ನಾಟಕ ಇದು ಇದು ಇದರಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ಅದು ಒಂದು ತುಂಬ ಉನ್ನತ ಮಟ್ಟಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋಗಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಬಲದಿಂದ ಒಂದು ಛಲದಿಂದ ಒಂದು ಅದನ್ನು ನಾವು ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಬಂದ್ವಿ ಆಫ್ ಎಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಬಸಂಗುಡಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಟು ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇ ಫಾರ್ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ರೀಸನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಶುಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ನೈಟ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಮೈ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲರ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಸ್ ದ ರೀಸನ್ ವೈ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇಂಟಿಮೇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಚ್ ಎನ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಎಚ್ ಎನ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಟೋಟಲಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಫಾರ್ ತ್ರೀ ರೀಸನ್ಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಆಫ್ ಲೇಟ್ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದೇ ಸೇ ಲಾಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ರೀಚ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಟು ದ ಕಾಮನ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ನೌ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ದಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎಚ್ ಎನ್ ಡಿಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ಥೇಟರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ಆ್ಯಂಗಲ್ಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೇನ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಥೇಟರ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಯು ನೋ ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಟು ಎಜುಕೇಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಟು ಮೆ ಕನ್ವೇ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಥಿಯೇಟರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎಚ್ ಎನ್ ಎಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಟ್ರೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ a champion of rational thinking and scientific temper dr hn has constantly questioned blind faith forever emphasizing the need for scientific attitude gandhi ji helidalli means and ends nalli yavado dhyayagalu iruttala sadhane madbekaadra pakshalli upayogistakanta marga idella marga siddhavagi irbeku antu rajkarani agli ondu merchant agli yare hakkondu hogli the methods that we adopt is they must be pure antu ಅಷ್ಟು ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ಸಾಕು ನಾವು ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇರ್ತೀವಿ ದಿ ಮೆಥಡ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಅಡಾಪ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇ ಟು ಅಚೀವ್ ಅವರ್ ಗೋಲ್ ನಡೆದಿ ಮೆಥಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ದನ್ ದಿ ಎಂಡ್ಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ದನ್ ದಿ ಎಂಡ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೈ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ಸೇ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ವಾಕ್ ಡೌನ್ ದಿ ಕಾರಿಡಾರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಹೈ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ವಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಚ್ ನರಸಿಂಹಯ್ಯ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಸರ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ಲೆಟ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಪೇ ದೇ ರಿಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟು ಹಮ್ ಸಮ್ ಡಿ ಡಿಟ್ ಆಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಬಿಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಡಿ ಕೇಸ್ ಬಿ ಡಿಟ್ ಕ್ರೆಡಿಟ್ ಬೈ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಮೋರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ She has stopped running but the race is on to take on the new challenges of life. She's Ash- She's Ashwini Nachappa, the glamorous queen of Indian athletics. Ashwini started running at the age of 10. A glimpse of her true potential was revealed when she joined the Karnataka junior team. She went on to win 100 meters events and was also adjudged the most promising athlete. I think the name Ashwini was named after a horse and <laughs> So that's how I just started running. Basically, uh, when we moved down from Calcutta, we stayed next to Kantirva Stadium in Bangalore. And uh, it was, you know, instead of playing on the streets, my mother made sure that after school we went on to the tracks to just exercise and watch people run there. So I basically ran for chocolates. You know, we used to have a Sadar coach, who, Mr. Gill, who used to say that every round you ran, you get a nutrient sweet, the 10 paisa sweets those days. So it was, I was just about seven or eight years old. And later it turned to medals and then awards. As a child, she had this fierce ambition to win every race she ran. This indomitable p- passion for winning catapulted her to glory and she became the top female athlete in the country in 1987. It was sheer hard work, dedication and determination and a sense of involvement with, with what I was doing. And also positive thinking played a major role because eventually it was mind over matter and I worked uh, very hard physically and mentally. Uh, I guess everybody works physically hard, but uh, most of our athletes today don't work mentally, you know, don't uh, work out or train mentally to be fit. Born into a lower middle class family, Ashwini had to battle adverse circumstances to reach her pinnacle in athletics. She attributes her meteoric rise in sports to her parents, mainly her mother, and her belief in positive thinking. Recipient of the Arjuna and Shiromani Awards, she beat P.T. Usha twice and became the fastest female athlete in India.
So I worked on it mentally with a sports psychologist, Dr. Rupindas. It was basically uh, positive thinking and visualizing uh, what I was supposed to do on track. So more than the physical training, the mental training helped me achieve that. Ashwini has represented India in three SAF games and won three golds, two silvers and one bronze. Her major achievements include her participation in two World Championships and the 1988 Olympic Games. She fondly recalls that her first international meet was when she was still in school. So it was a great sense of satisfaction uh, and uh, you know, I just thank the Lord that everything went smoothly and uh, thank my parents because without them I wouldn't have been there. So it was a great, great feeling. Ashwini seems disillusioned with the lack of commitment to the present day athletes. After Usha came on, I think she brought uh, athletics into the forefront uh, with her. She was an incredible athlete with her performing so well. Indian athletics was considered one of the main sports in India. And uh, I brought in a little bit of glamour. So we had a lot of media come across. Uh, that's how it got popular. But right now, uh, we don't have many competitions. We don't have you know, much publicity on our uh, athletics. And basically, uh, most are not, our athletes are not uh, very determined. You know, Right now, it is like there is a sports uh, quota in every field. So most of them are there just for an educational uh, you know, seat or a job. It's not uh, to achieve goals. They don't have goals and targets set. And Being the glamorous girl of Indian athletics, it was not long before Tinseltown beckoned Ashwini. I was in news when I beat Usha twice. And you know I was on the cover pages of most of the leading news uh, papers and uh, the magazines. And uh, at that moment, uh, Mr. Ramaji Rao from the Telugu industry and the director, Mr. Mauli, decided to do a film on sport. Uh, but they didn't know which sport to take up uh, you know, for their film. And they were contemplating whether it's going to be cricket or whether it's going to be athletics. And athletics being uh, you know, visually more appealing to people, they came up uh, with an idea that they would do a story on me. And they came. I was in the tracks when I was, uh, you know, just doing my training, and they came and said, uh, "Would you like to do a film?" I said, "Are you mad? No way!" And they said, "No, it's going to be a film on sports, on athletics, and a bit and piece of your career." So I said, "Okay, uh, I'll consider it, but give me time till I finish the Asian Games. We had the Asian Games coming up, and then I got into it. And I said, this is the only way I could give something back to athletics by popularizing it and film being." the most important media where you know, it reaches the mass. So I did that, and uh, I had a lot of offers after that, because my first movie was uh, 100 days in all the languages in Telugu, Tamil, and Hindi. Then I did it purely for money. <laughs> the medals she has won were priceless tokens of her talent, but of little worth in the materialistic world. So Ashwini decided to concentrate on her family, and job as a bank officer. I was expecting my first child uh, when I fin uh, finished my last uh, film. And I thought that, you know, there's nothing greater than to be a mother. And I have to dedicate and, uh, you know, space out my time just for my children in the coming years. And I said, that's it. I'm not doing any more. In sports, she made the country proud as she is good in sports. She is good in work also. She is working in the publicity department of the bank. Besides, she brought a lot of business for this bank. She is a good worker and a hard worker. This outstanding achiever believes in doing her bit for society and is now actively involved with mentally retarded children. I have been associated with Special Olympics India for about eight years. I work with them. I basically help them raise funds and train our athletes. We have about 35,000 children in this program all over the country. It gives me a great sense of uh, satisfaction and you know, it, I'm very happy with those children out there because I think they need us more than the true athletes. You know, it's so politicized in our country. 
So it is a goal that uh, we have a unified sport for the handicapped and uh, channelize them into the mainstream of our society. Ashwini started small, but with the vision of greater things and the determination to transform that vision into tangible reality, she became India's Flojo. You have to be physically and mentally fit to progress in life, in whatever you do, and to have a positive approach and set goals and targets for yourselves. Be it stardom or athletics, whatever the venture, Ashwini has managed to prove her mettle unfailingly. He is a wizard who transforms people without a wand. This extraordinary young man of Kanda Theatre, affectionately known as Makeup Nani, is only 70. His association with theatre goes back five decades. An accomplished actor and a talented director, Nani concentrates on rather neglected backstage activity, developing makeup into an art form. The backstage was so much neglect. So I shifted from acting to backstage. In that too, uh, my weakness for make makeup, I made it my strength. A practical person who does not waste anything, Nani creates masks with everything, even chewing gum. He's a very keen observer and advocates using safe and inexpensive makeup materials. Kashmir to Kanyakumari, Assam to possibly Jamnagar, face changes structure changes, skin texture changes. Therefore, I didn't want to use the same kind of uh, makeup. Therefore, I started experimenting using uh, whatever that was available, ethnic, that I started using. And um, as long as it's not harmful to the skin, why not? And uh, so-called foreign stuff, I personally feel is not suitable for our skins. That's how I created my own makeup material. Most present-day professionals in this field have trained under Nani. Ironically, Nani himself has to fall back on the corporate world to sustain a livelihood. Well, those days, you know, they used to pay three rupees for dressing up almost 24 characters. Well, it was not very lucrative, one. Number two, well, it was not considered as a respectable job to be a makeup artist. Even today, many people say, makeup man. I believe in calling him as a makeup artist. Like a lighting designer, set designer. He's a creative artist. Imagine, from three rupees today, I know some of the makeup artists get about anywhere around 8,000 rupees for a shift. Well, those days were difficult days. They couldn't perform, spending a lot of money. How can they pay the makeup artist? A self-made man, Nani's entire family is actively involved in theatre. His home is aptly named Green Room. Nani's association with makeup changes life significantly. Well, I got married to Bhargavi. I went to her college to dress up. Um, dress her up in a male role. So I fixed a moustache. And I was surprised, a young girl. Not even bothered about tomorrow what happens with the, uh, the colleagues may ridicule her, tease her. This became, uh, instead of a hero worship, a heroine worship, I got hooked. And it has given me immense satisfaction. I, even now I go around, uh, talk to people, uh, encourage them, right, motivate them to take to theater, youngsters. And in my own life, I feel totally contented, happy because of theater. With theatre being looked down upon and also look, lacking funds, Nani had to develop several indigenous backstage techniques which have proved cost effective even today. Wigs, they don't have uh, good forehead pieces which can match the colour of the skin, other person. So the joint between the 
skin and possibly the big color or a big uh, forehead piece. Always difficult to match. So I used to chew chewing gum, right? Keep it in glass, uh, glass of water, take it out, mix color, and then join the uh, joints, which you can't make out even from a one foot distance. I use a bit of a tonic for blood. People import blood from America for performances here. But a particular tonic looks exactly like blood, clots like blood. Recipient of many state and national awards, Nani has also been involved with parallel cinema. Being an authority on makeup, he has tried to simplify the art of makeup for youngsters. Many youngsters wanted some sort of a reference book. This is where I started thinking, why not write a small book which they can go through once in a way. So that's how I wrote this book on makeup. I call it as Makeup as Art. As far as I know, it's the first book in Indian language. An associate of the Drama Board of England, Nani was one of the first Indians to get a scholarship from the British Council to study theatre in London. So I went to London on the scholarship. At the college, British Drama League, so I happened. They said, hey, why don't you have some makeup and come on? come out of the stage so that we can judge and see. And cosmetics being very expensive, I selected a few colors. With that, I created a ghost on myself. And they were surprised. They said, you know makeup. That's how I had to teach, demonstrate makeup in my own college at London. Nani was selected as the Indian delegate at the first World Theatre Conference and much sought after by visiting foreign troops. Well, Jeffrey Kendall, for eight long months, he performed all over Bangalore, terribly influenced by the method he adapted, uh, performing in various halls, using minimum of setting. And um, I had the privilege of working with him eight months without any salary, because I wanted to learn. In fact, Shashi Kapoor was sent to Bangalore by Prithviraj Kapoor to work under, study under Jeffrey Kendall. And Jennifer and Sheshi fell in love in Bangalore. A doting grandfather, he's very down to earth and greatly loved by one and all. Well, I've been in theater for about 10 years now. But I've known Nani much before I got into theater. And what I liked about him first was his extreme common sense. He was a very practical person very good human being and when I got into theatre and got to know him as a makeup man I found he wasn't just a makeup man he's an artist he uses a face like a painter would use the canvas physically and mentally very fit Nani has cleared many hurdles in his path there is no shortcut for success in life you must have the commitment, dedication, devotion, hard work. There is no other alternative for success. If I can succeed, you can too. Nani is forever experimenting with something new and displays a childlike enthusiasm for everything in life, which is reflected in his youthful spirit. He is popularly known as Green Judge for his judgments on the environment, just as Michael F. Saldhana can easily qualify as being a messiah to the masses in more ways than one. A sitting judge in the Karnataka High Court, he aims at the creation of an ideal democracy. Well, to start with, um, I feel that there should have been a total concentration 
on the removal of ignorance. And the, the second aspect is that we should have had a more judiciously defined electoral system, a system which would have uh, concentrated on bringing out the best of talent and merit and utilizing it in the governing process of the country. I think uh, we've slipped up as far as both areas are concerned. Born in Belgaum, but more popularly known as Mangalurian, he was a gold medalist throughout his education. He firmly believes in being positive. It is true that uh, everybody, myself included, feels rather depressed uh, because they have been followed, followed in standards and uh, there have been very uh, uh, depressing areas uh, as far as public life is concerned. Uh, the abnormal increase in corruption and um, also the combination of these factors that have contributed towards a kind of a brain drain. Having regard to this state of affairs, that there's a very strong reaction from the young people and from the whole of the student community. Now, I have found everywhere that there is a feeling of restlessness. Uh, it is not a feeling of dejection. Uh, there is a kind of a determination now coming out uh, to do away with the inhibiting factors and to ensure that some constructive, uh, uh, some, some constructive development comes about. So I don't, I don't really feel that one should be depressed by thinking that we are at a rather low ebb. The situation couldn't have got worse, so it can only get better. This living legend of Karnataka is a man of high principle, devoting his professional life to ensure justice for all. A long time back when I was in the Bombay High Court, there was a very gory case involving the rape of a, of a very young child. And uh, it was for the first time in that judgment that the court took a very, very strong view of an offense of this type. And uh, it's probably the only instance in recorded legal history where a life sentence was awarded. A sentence of imprisonment for life was awarded by me. Uh, for this particular offense of rape of a minor child. The child incidentally died uh, later on. It was a very gory case. Now, it did come under some criticism because uh, there are people who thought uh, that it was too hard and too harsh and somebody labeled it as ruthless. But after, after some time, the realization dawned and I still felt that that judgment would go a very long way in bringing about a reformative process. Justice Saldana began his career as a lawyer, specializing in criminal and industrial law. He was elevated to the bench as a judge of the High Court of Bombay in 1990. I do feel that if the High Court, for instance, issues a direction or uh, hands down a verdict, and that is not carried out, as happens most of the time, that it's a total waste of the entire process. And therefore, I feel that it's very necessary that the court or the judge ensures that that uh, judgment is translated into action. 100% of my judgments have been implemented. And the reason for it is because um, I do not issue a direction or an order and just leave it, uh, just, just leave it on paper. Uh, what I do is I direct that the order has got to be transmitted to the person or to the authority who is required to translate it into action, point number one. Secondly, having regard to what is required to be done, I set a time limit. Uh, thirdly, I insist that the authority has got to report compliance back to me. Rated as one of the most innovative and high-profile judges, Justice Saldana is renowned for his bold, original and path-breaking pronouncement. I personally feel that as far as the courts are concerned, this question of lobbies and this question of uh, who wants what is not the way a case has got to be decided. It's got to be decided strictly according to law and merits. A fair and fearless judge, Justice Saldana is a visiting professor at many international institutions and academies. I like writing, um, I like lecturing. Uh, even now, I do a lot of uh, both of these. And um, I would have been very happy as a teacher or as a professor. But I must, I must confess that I've got almost, I've developed an equally strong uh, attachment or fascination for the journalistic field. You see, whether it's the electronic media or the newspapers or the, the whole gamut.
Justice Saldana firmly believes that only punishment is not solution enough. His brand of instant justice has been widely appreciated. With regard to criminal law, where uh, probably for more than a century the concentration has been on punishing the accused person and uh, giving him adequate punishment, society cries out for his blood if the offense is serious and things like that. I have been concentrating in the course of the last six months on the rights of the victim and uh, in, even in a murder case uh, I have imposed uh, a very heavy fine on the accused because I said that money will have to go as compensation to the widow and the children of the person whom he had unjustifiably killed. Now this we have been doing in um, quite a few cases even in the case of petty offenses and we found that uh, this is a this is a kind of a social justice aspect. A recipient of various awards for leadership, concern for environment and social justice, his hard-hitting judgments have brought about a healthy respect for the law. I have, I have today with me the uh, responsibility of seeing to it that in almost every case, uh, if there is new ground that is required to be broken for the law, that I've got to do it. And I do think that in many areas I've been able to achieve that. Uh, more, more importantly, the, um, uh, the crying need uh, to see to its work better and the courts work faster. And if one can be innovative and uh, if one can speed up the process, I've always advocated in my court, I've always advocated the system of instant justice. If, there's, if a litigant comes to the court and is entitled to justice, uh, the litigant should get justice instant. The judiciary has a very responsible role to play in this country more so in areas when we talk about justice I think the predominant issue is social justice and the second aspect is achieving respect for the law and enforcing the law. Justice Saldana is an example of true judicial determination, a luminary who is passionate about human rights. I know that there are occasions when we've got to pass very strong orders and at that time the reactions may be even sharper. But I, I feel that a good judge has got to carry on regardless. It does not worry me one bit. In fact, recently I told somebody that whenever we've got to do a good job, we've also got to do an unpleasant job. Take, for instance, in the field of criminal law. And uh, therefore, I think a judge should never be deterred by the type of reaction that the judgment may, revo may evoke. With a deep-rooted commitment towards all living things, Justice Saldana is a true guardian of our environment. That the whole of the world is now coming round to a system whereby you try and achieve uh, what you call compliance. Not so much the compulsion factor saying that you will be punished if you do something, but you get, you get people to turn around and voluntarily say that, look, I feel a sense of responsibility. I've got to save this planet. I've got to, I've got to see to it that the quality of life improves and do everything that is directed towards that. Voluntary compliance. In 1997, World Survey listed him as one of the 10 best judges and he was the only Indian on the list. Well, my message for the new millennium is I'd like to see the system to which I belong uh, work more effectively in the sense that it lives up to the expectations of the common man, the common citizen of this country. What are those expectations? That the courts must work fast, that the courts must work well, uh, that the, the citizen should at the end of the day be able to turn around and say that I am happy with the working of the courts. That I think is the, is the total objective uh, towards which all of us judges and uh, lawyers have got to aim at. A lone crusader, dispensing justice, Michael F. Saldana leaves a life beyond himself.